Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. Now we're going to look at classical Muslim perspectives on abortion, because that's when a lot of the opinions are formed that we still follow today. Yeah. So Dr. Shabir, tell us about what some of those opinions are. Yeah, so basically, as you know, we have four schools of Islamic jurisprudence. Um, and so let me just uh, very briefly say, you know, what I recall from, from their approaches, and then we can talk about like where these opinions are derived from, because obviously we have to ultimately go back to the Quran and what the Prophet Muhammad, peace mm -hmm. be upon him, is reported to have said about the issue. So starting with the four schools, so uh, they, they almost unanimously, um, not uh, all, take away the word almost, they unanimously agree that after 120 days, uh, the soul is breathed into the fetus and uh, therefore abortions are impermissible. They're mm. haram, um, unlawful, uh, unless uh, there is a threat to the life of the, of the mother, uh, in which case uh, one would have to go for the lesser of two evils, sacrifice the child to save the, the mother. So that's after 120 days old when it is thought that the soul is breathed into the, the fetus. Now what about a, before 120 days old? So within that period, um, we can uh, have three segments of time, um, uh, of the first 40 days, and then the second 40 days, the third 40 days. Um, they, there is a hadith which says that um, the, uh, you know, God gathers each one of you in, your, in the wombs of your mothers uh, and then uh, you, for 40 days, and then you are... Uh, a, a thing that clings, uh, mm. an alaka, for uh, a similar period. And then you are like a chewed lump, a mudra, for a similar period. So that, that's where they get the 120 days from, 40 plus 40 plus 40. Mm -hmm. So as for the first 40 days, uh, the, the scholars generally think that that is this phrase, that is, this, that is the phase uh, that the Quran speaks about when the Quran uses the term nutfa, which means something like a drop. Um, and they, th they take this to mean the drop of fluid. Um, and uh, so they say that during that f first 40 days, um, some more scholars are willing to say that an abortion within that period is, uh, you know, harmless. Mm. Um, the Maliki school is the strictest among them, uh, saying that even within this 40-day period, it is Jews. it is not permissible. Mm. Uh, and uh, the uh, more liberal of the schools in, in this matter is the Hanafi school, which uh, basically allows, like you might find in some of the classical law books like Fatwa la Migiri, uh, somebody is asking, okay, so I'm a nursing mother and I have, you know, my, my milk is drying up and so on, can, and then I'm having another child. Uh, have another pregnancy, can I abort this one? And the answer would be, okay, if it's within 120 days, it's permissible. Mm. Uh, sometimes the question is uh, addressed as well, whether this is the right of the woman to choose or uh, is it, uh, you know, the, the, does the husband have to give permission? And uh, the, uh, the Hanafi school uh, gives this right to the woman. The woman can uh, make this um, choice of her own. She does not need the, the, her husband's permission, the father of the child's permission uh, to abort. Uh, the uh, Shafi and Hanbali schools uh, are mixed in that you will find scholars within the school taking a more liberal approach, and, like the Hanafi school, and some taking a stricter approach uh, akin to the, um, to the Maliki school. It is also worth mentioning that, uh, you know, in Islamic law, there, there is a penalty for uh, manslaughter mm -hmm. and accidental killing, probably, I should say. So then uh, the scholars apply that to the unborn child as well. Uh, so uh, there is a case in, that is mentioned in the hadith that uh, a, a woman struck another one with something like a rolling pin and, uh, and the woman died, but she was also carrying uh, her, her child and, and the child died as a result. So then a, a penalty, according to the hadith, was uh, given in that the woman uh, who, who struck the other one uh, had to uh, pay what is referred to as, a, as, a, as blood money. Um, it's called the ghurra in, in this case, in the, in, in the Arabic language. So she had to pay that uh, as a compensation for the accidental death uh, caused to the child. Uh, so, so here, it's not only the death of the mother, but also the death of the, of the child mm -hmm. for which she became responsible. So, so that shows that in, in Islamic law and from this hadith, it is evident that uh, the child is a person 
and, and the child is a valuable human being uh, whose death may have to be compensated for. So this lives on in some of these uh, schools, um, especially so the Maliki school, uh, but also in the Hanbali and the Shafi uh, schools to greater or lesser extents. Uh, sometimes there is also the prescribed, uh, uh, th there are two types of penalty in Islamic tradition. Uh, one is the blood money, but w the other is kafara, to, which is uh, a way of, um, you know, uh, showing repentance for, for what you have done. Uh, so usually that involves the payment of, a, of, of, of some compensation uh, to the families of the murdered victim. Uh, but it also uh, would involve, uh, in some cases, fasting for, for two months in, uh, continuously mm -hmm. um, a as a way for the killer to show repentance. So in some of the schools, uh, this is also prescribed in case uh, one accidentally kills um, uh, the baby in the womb. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Shabir, when we were looking at other religions, you mentioned that, you know, in comparison, Islam is very flexible. What did you mean by that? Well, let, let's start with um, the, the fact that uh, here we have this um, cutoff point at 120 days where uh, there is an allowance there, there, there to say, okay, after 120 days, uh, if there is a threat to the life of the mother, uh, then the abortion would be uh, permissible and, in fact, even desirable because you have to save the primary life, which is the, the mother. Sometimes the scholars use the analogy of root and, and, and tree. So the root is more important to save than the tree itself because, mm -hmm. of course, from the root you can get another tree. So save the life of the mother rather than the child if there is to be a choice. But uh, here, we, this much is similar to other religions, but it also uh, reflects that flexibility which is known from other religions. But when it comes to uh, the period before 120 days, we see a, a much more flexibility within the uh, Islamic rulings, especially as we have described from the Hanafi school, uh, where you know, up to 120 days, uh, women would have this um, freedom to uh, abort um, without guilt, because mm. uh, as in the case of the woman who says, my milk is drying up. Um, and I have another um, pregnancy on the way, so what should I do? And the permission is that she could abort. Um, and then within the first 40 days, there is, more, uh, there, there is greater acceptance among the jurists uh, for allowing uh, abortions. Uh, because at that stage, they're thinking this is unformed. It is not like a human child yet. Um, they think it's more, mostly like in a liquid form um, and, and not flesh-like. Flesh uh, so they, they allow for abortion within the 40 uh, days. So that we're talking about close to six weeks here. Mm -hmm. um, so so we, we do not find su that such demarcations in the other religions which I have uh, described, um, especially with the, hun the, the great period of 120 days, mm -hmm. which would be something like uh, 17 weeks. Do I have that right? Uh, 17 times 7, maybe 119, something like <laughs> this. Um, <laughs> 17 weeks plus a day. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, so we see that there is a, a, there is a stricture uh, uh, at this, uh, on the one hand saying this is a, a, a person should be recognized as a life uh, to be preserved. And if you kill this, uh, even accidentally, there is a penalty, a stiff financial penalty. Some may mention the price of seven camels, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and on the other hand, there is a flexibility, especially in the early stage, uh, up to uh, 40 days, great flexibility, lesser flexibility up to 120 days. Mm -hmm. So from what I understand, Islam doesn't fit into the pro-life uh, camp, but it also doesn't fit into the pro-choice camp as well, right? Because there is a respect for life. There is an understanding that uh, a, someone's body is not their own, right? It's a trust from God. So we need to be careful what we do with it, right? And when we make our decisions, we need to make it thinking about um, our, our responsibilities towards God as well. Yes, yes. And it, it, it recognizes the right of the child to, to live. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 we can say it captures uh, good features from, from both sides. It's, uh, you know, uh, together with the pro-choice uh, movement, uh, the Quran can say, uh, and, and Muslims can say, well, yeah, the woman has some choice in this, especially as we've seen reflected in the Hanafi school. And uh, uh, together with the pro-lifers, we can say, yes, we value the life of the child. And if you take the life of the child, even accidentally, 
uh, you know, there is a penalty. But so far, we haven't been talking about taking the life of the child in abortion, where, you know, this is like accidental killing. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the case with the rolling pin, this woman struck the other one, causing the death of her, of her baby, as opposed to somebody deliberately uh, carrying out an abortion. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but uh, yes, we, we recognize the right of this child to, to live. So Islam, actually um, uh, sh strikes a happy medium. It's a golden mean between these two extremes. And it's important for young Muslims to understand this because if the only two choices out there uh, are either pro-choice or uh, pro-life, then and you feel compelled to pick one or, or the, of the two, uh, then not, now it should come as a relief to recognize that you have actually a golden mean in between those two extremes. We're going to pick up this series again in the next episode, Dr. Shabir, but thank you for that. You're welcome. On behalf of Let the Quran Speak, I want to say thank you. You've helped us become the most widely watched Muslim TV show in Canada. I want to appeal to you to continue to support us. You can visit our website, QuranSpeaks.com. We also accept e-transfers to iGive at QuranSpeaks.com. And we're now on Patreon, so you can make a monthly contribution. May God bless you and your loved ones today and always.